Hey guys, Mr. Vethel here and today we're going to review the Muse case for the new Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 2019 edition. Obviously you need to have a Raspberry Pi 4. It doesn't really matter how much RAM you have. In my case I have the 4GB RAM edition, so yeah it's a pretty beefy one. And yeah, like you know the Raspberry Pi, you just open it, there you have it. You probably want to have a case for that Raspberry Pi because just letting it down on the ground isn't really good because it might get grounded and that's not good for your Raspberry Pi. So today we have the Muse case for the Raspberry Pi 4 and let's open it. You can of course find all the links down in the description. Okay, so that's the cooling fan, that's pretty nice. So yeah, that's the case, it's a transparent one, pretty cool. It has uh, almost no metal except the screws and um, that's for having like better Wi-Fi and better Bluetooth connection so the case doesn't block those signals. Next to it we have a proper charging device which is, if I'm not wrong, 5 volts and 3 amperes. I hope the camera can see it. Let's see, camera focus. Yeah, you should be able to see it, 5 volts and 3 amps, so that's like the perfect voltage for your Raspberry Pi. And it also comes with an off and on switch, which is pretty cool. Next up we also have some cooling pads for the Raspberry Pi 4, which is pretty cool. We get like cooling pads and a fan, that's really nice. And also some stuff that you can read. Also, a quick note to the charging device. I would recommend to use the charging device that they deliver with the case and not like some charging device from your old phones like this one. From Samsung you can like uh, see if the camera behaves well. That it's only, come on, 5 volts and 1.55 amps. So it doesn't really take the res Raspberry Pi requirements because the Raspberry Pi needs at least 5 volts and 3 amps. So I wouldn't really recommend to use that adapter, so just try and go with the one that you get in this package. In the instructions, they show you that you can actually have high speed and low speed. Uh, depends on how much um, power you want to consume, but that's actually just up to you, uh, depending on what project you're working on. For my case, I'm going to yeah, like choose the 5 volts one because I'm going to have like a pretty hard job for my Raspberry Pi but I'm going to come later to this project maybe in another video. Well, I just dis disassembled the Raspberry Pi case. Then you start to peel it off and lay it on the ground. Then you take the bottom layer and press it, press it down the other one. So you start building like your own case, that's cool. After that of course you take the other one, place it down again here. And then you take your Raspberry Pi and place it right in the middle of it. So it should look like that, pretty cool. And now we take the next layer and put it like that. On the Raspberry Pi, where well, yeah, it makes sense, cause like all the GPIOs are out, like you can access them, so that's pretty cool, and it covers like all the interior things up. So now we need to open and place the heat sinks, and on the instructions menu you can obviously see that we have like four heat sinks, and all of them need to be placed down on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to do that. So that's how it should look like. And yeah, now all the four heatsinks are attached to the Raspberry Pi 4. After that you can place all the other four transparent layers. And those in particular, uh, like those two right now, in the, the right, same direction. So like all those ports are accessible, same on this side. So that's pretty cool and here too. That's actually actual cool case. It's pretty neat, I like it very much. Then you take the black one, put it down just like that. 
So it marks like the top of the Raspberry Pi case. And then of course you need to peel off the protective layer from the top layer of the Raspberry Pi case. So there you go. And then you put it down like, uh, I guess that, right. Also, before you do that, you need to take out the fan and it comes with a couple of screws so you need to uh, dig those in and yeah that's like the fan so you need to put this in that transparent case uh, before you put it on the Raspberry Pi. So then it should look like that and you can see you have like the display cables for the camera and the display for the Raspberry Pi and here like the exits for the GPIOs. So first of all what you need to do to connect those fan pins to the Raspberry Pi. So now I need to connect like the red pin to the second GPIO and the black wire to the third pin to get the 5 volt maximum firepower of the fan. So then it should look like that and the next thing you need to do is to put back the screws. In the end that's how it looks and of course you don't want to forget those four little things at the back at your Raspberry Pi to stabilize it and not gliding on the surface just like that. So all you need to do is just to place them in the four corners at the back at your Raspberry Pi and let them sit there for a couple of minutes and then they're like hard to the layer and then it's done. So. And what we're going to do after that is pretty simple, we're just going to run the Raspberry Pi and see if all the fan and heat sinks are actually cooling that Raspberry Pi. So then that's how it looks like. Pretty cool, stable, doesn't glide on a flat surface, that's pretty nice. And now I'm going to charge it up with the provided cable and charging device. We all see. I'm just going to plug that in. It starts to boot up and we see the fan starts to do its job. That's pretty cool. And it's really, really quiet. I don't really know if you can hear it in the video, but one thing I can for sure, it's really, really quiet. And that's pretty cool. And yeah, you can like feel the wind. So that's pretty nice. And it's all booted up. Everything works. Cool. So yeah guys, if you want to have the same case like me, then just go to the description down below and you get all the links for the Raspberry Pi and the case with the device. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and like and leave a comment for further projects. And then guys, like always, have a good time and bye.